Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Football Daily Weekly. I've got Lawrence and Adam with me once again. Good to have you here, chaps. Chatting through the uh, weekend's football and five things we learned uh, from the weekend. First up, Gareth Bale. I think it's nine goals in his uh, first 13 games, something like that. He scored a perfect Mm -hmm. hat-trick on the weekend. Adam, was that ever in doubt? I don't think so. I think a lot of people were quick to write him off after El Clasico. Mm -hmm. Um, He he was sort of playing in the wrong position then. He hadn't had a pre-season, had injury troubles. Yeah, people seem very quick to sort of um, to say it was a waste of money, basically. But I think yeah, he, he's come good, and I think he always was going to do that. So yeah, he scored what is it, eight goals and six assists in the last seven games, which is pretty impressive. That's absolutely super. Have a look at that, Lawrence. It's yeah, true. It's good stats. Right there. We've done that research. Yeah. <laughs> the best thing that can happen is Ronaldo getting injured, because I think now they have almost a like for like replacement in a way. Someone who is as technically gifted, someone who possibly has a bit more vision for other players on the pitch. Um, no. I think so. No, I think that's a fair point, actually. Uh, and, you know, his assists probably uh, say that as well. Um, and also, you know, someone who's hungry to impress out in Madrid. So I think, I think it makes sense that this, this comes now. Aaron Ramsey, um, another Welshman, um, is, is tearing up another European league. Playing fantastically well for, for Arsenal. He's only 22. He's maturing very nicely indeed, Lawrence. Scoring some great goals as well. Yeah, absolutely. Two against his old club card. Yeah, that header. That's yeah. What a header it was. Um, how come this is happening? I think Dan Faisy said it on this very show yes. that Wenger played him out of position for a very long time, mm-hmm. decided to now play him in position mm. in a midfield which plays to his strengths yeah. uh, and supports him very nicely. And th- th- it, part of this Arsenal balance is that Ramsey does have that freedom to move around mm. in, the, in the space just behind the strikers. And that, I mean, that's lovely for him as well. The fact that he can have that freedom and be supported by the likes of Arteta, etc., who make uh, make him a much better player, I think. Well, Simon has been crucial. Also, let's say, uh, the emergence of Giroud in this Arsenal side has probably benefited the midfield directly behind oh, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's really important, is they've found someone who links up the play quite well. Everton are having a pretty good season themselves. Roberto Martinez uh, likes to play attractive football. Yeah. Um, and, and they're playing well. They beat Stoke City 4-0 on the weekend. I mean, Lawrence, it's, it's good times down at Goodison Park this season. Great times. Mm. Everton fans now are finding it hard to admit that they haven't always played beautiful football and it has at times been Is that right? uh, quite physical. Okay. Um, and sometimes uh, yeah, quite, quite formulaic. Mm-hmm. Whereas this seems a bit more beautiful and there's a lot more freedom to the, the play that they have. Mm. The, the Men in Blazers podcast say a great thing. Has David Moyes been holding this team back for a decade? Well, um, or, or has he, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's an, it's an interesting point to make. It's an interesting question to ask and look mm. at. Um, and, you know, I don't think he's ever held them back. I don't think holding them back, but I'm wondering if maybe he hasn't squeezed the full potential out. Like, he literally put the lemon on and just went, well, there we go, that's enough lemon juice. Whereas Roberto Martinez is, like, properly smashing it down. Do you think, yeah. Adam? What I would say is that Moyes sort of uh, brought a structure to the team with very good foundations. Mm. And you might say Martinez has built upon that with mm-hmm. his uh, squeezing of the lemon. Mm-hmm. Sort of <laughs> these players, these what I think, it. yeah. But I think these peppering eleven, these sort of the loan signings he's made have been inspired. I mean, Delafe looked amazing. Mm. Yeah, I think Martinez has he's definitely developed it. He's evolved. Yeah. It? Wayne Rooney is uh, quite possibly Manchester United's most valuable player at the moment. Uh, he's having a great time, isn't he, Lawrence? I wonder if other people around him are having to sacrifice themselves for Wayne Rooney to benefit in this system. Such as? Uh, Welbeck Kagawa yesterday. Uh, but one of them was going to have to be pushed out to the left, but then Kikawa. you find that they were very reluctant to actually do that, weren't they? But Rooney was played up top, though. Yeah, but he's but he so often drops back. Mm. And, you know, he's so used to coming back in the field. I think that other mm. people are maybe suffering in this system because he needs to play such a... or doesn't need to, but he is playing such a prominent role. Mm. Do you think they're over-reliant on Wayne Rooney? Well... Bring out an interesting stat here. Here we go. He has scored eight goals, mm-hmm. made five assists. That's 59% of their goals, essentially, through that. Um, and in the last few seasons, he's always been about 30% uh, of their contribution right. in terms of goals and assists. So, potentially, yes. Newcastle United are mm. having a good season. Are they? Sounds yeah. odd to say, but they are. The league table doesn't lie, as the old cliche goes. Um, they didn't have the best of starts. They were... They were losing games, they were dropping points here, there and everywhere, but they've won their last four. Um, and and they're, they're in the top half, quite comfortably in the top half. I mean, challenging for Europe, dare I say, Lawrence. Not challenging for Europe. Mm, okay. um, dare, you did dare. And I, <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think they are challenging for Europe. I think it's, uh, it, it's good that they, they are where they are, but I think that Newcastle fans and Newcastle media are certainly very realistic. After the up and down seasons that they've had, they want to level, level the ship. They're, they're only two points behind City now. Which is well, there you go. Pretty impressive. Mm. 
But I think, yeah, they when they sold Dembabar last January, they were really missing that sort of striker. Papi Cisse's form just deserted him completely. So bringing in Loic Remy, I mean, he's been fantastic. He scored eight goals this season, mm. so it's just improved them. No end. Kabai as well, resurgence of Kabai in this side. And yeah. keeping Kabai was crucial. Yeah, and it looks like they'll do the same in January, according to uh, a lot of Newcastle sources. So that's that's great for them. That's what we've got time for this week. Thanks for watching. Also, big thanks to Adam and Lawrence for, for your uh, views and insights. Uh, leave your comments below um, on what you've learned this weekend. On Wednesday, we will be back talking about European transfer activity and which players will be going to uh, some of the big clubs in the European leagues. And do get your comments in on who you think is going to go where. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.